So I think I'm going to call this one They Want Us Fat, Sick and Unhappy. Are you going to oblige? Question mark. So those of you who've been watching my channel for a while will know that I've um, I discovered something pretty important back in uh, February this year relating to, to diet and fitness. It certainly transformed me. And yesterday I did a, an interview with this guy called Felix. And uh, there's a number of things that, um, that are quite special about this guy. The first, first one is uh, his amazing maturity and capacity for uh, logical thinking at such a tender age. He's, he's 21, 21 years of age. So I wish I had that ability to, to, to think logically and to evaluate things and to be self-critical. Uh, he's also um, what's, what's called um, a Swedish speaking Finn. So he's got a Finnish passport, but um, when he was at home with his parents being brought up, his, his mother tongue was, was Swedish. So um, I'm not sure if you could call these people a minority within Finland, but uh, it's something that most people don't know about, that that's, uh, in Finland there are two official languages, neither of which are English. You know, it's uh, either Finnish or Swedish. His dad's also a doctor, so you might think, well, there's nothing, nothing unusual about that. <clears throat> um, yeah, he's, a, he's a, an emergency medicine doctor. And what Felix has been able to do is that he's been able to change his, his, his own father's mind. And I'm not going to speak any more about that, but it's quite interesting um, to hear about the processes that Felix went through um, to undo his, his dad's kind of um, medical education. Again, I'm, I'm not going to say too much about that because I don't want to steal his thunder. Uh, safe to say, though, that this guy's um, advice, he explains these concepts and ideas um, very, very well. And these are life transforming um, pieces of advice that he's got to give. So um, I hope you enjoy this. So this is this is Felix uh, Vilcom. So, Felix, um, what did you what was your diet like in, in the past? What did you used to eat? Yeah, Nigel. So I used to eat a quite what I would call a clean version of the standard um, Western diet. So I was eating mostly whole foods, very much like the food permits tells you to do. Um, and uh, a lot of grains. So probably half of all my calories uh, came from grains, vegetables, uh, these carb sources, and uh, then quite a lot of protein as well, because I, I wanted to build muscle. So um, quite a bit of protein, but it was always from lean sources. So very much chicken. And uh, I avoided a lot of saturated fat, avoided red meat because I was told that it's so bad for me and all the dangers that come with it. So that was basically what I was eating before. So by most people's standard, a very healthy diet, but at least for me, it wasn't working very well. And I think we'll go into the, the problems with that sort of diet as well. Yeah. Okay. So how old are you now? So right now I'm 21 years old okay. and uh, yeah. So when, how old were you when you decided to change what you were going to eat? Yeah. So I was, I was 20 years old when I first started the carnivore diet. So that was about almost four months ago right now. Uh, when I, when I decided to, uh, go on carnivore and, uh, and yeah, now, now I've been on it for about four months and it's been quite life changing for me. Okay, so do you want to sort of flesh out what you eat now um, compared to what you yeah. used to eat? Yeah, of course. So right now it's quite simple. So in short, I basically eat meat and eggs. That's basically it. So uh, I eat quite a lot of red meat, uh, lots of fish as well, and, uh, and pork, and then quite a bit of eggs. So that's basically what I eat. I also add in salt, electrolytes, and I cook with butter, but that's basically it. I quit coffee for about, I quit coffee a month ago or so. So now it's it's basically five, six ingredients and that's it. Okay. And and what, what health changes have you noticed as a result of that? Yeah, well, 
the the health changes have been remarkable. Uh, I would I would say for me at least life changing. So the reason why I started carnivore was because I had very low energy levels overall. I had lots of brain fog. I had very hard time concentrating. I had very bad acne, and all of these things they have immensely improved uh, being on a carnivore diet, eating the simple way. And uh, today I have so much more energy that I had in the past. The energy levels are very stable throughout the day. My mental clarity is just on another level. And uh, as a student, it's a big thing for me to be able to concentrate uh, very a lot better. So in the past, I remember I had a hard time like reading a book uh, because, you know, I would just need to reread everything. I had a massive brain fog all the time. Right now, I can concentrate for several hours at the time. My my mental clarity is just just on a different level. So, yeah, and, and also my acne has, has totally gone away. I still have some scars, scars left, and I'm also improving every day. I, th I think that my health is just getting better and better. Um, and uh, also a uh, very interesting thing is with my like body recomposition. So I've noticed that without even putting in so much effort, I just noticed that my I've got a stronger, my bones have strengthened and I've been able to keep my weight, but lose fat at the same time. So yeah. the benefits have been through, truly life changing. Yeah. And where, where do you think the kind of, you know, you sort of talked about the, the standard sort of Western diet. Yeah. Do you want to talk about the advice that people are typically given in, in Finland and, and where that, the sources of that advice that well maybe certainly affected you or influenced yeah. you yeah well, well i think that most of today's health advice really comes from the 70s and and 80s where where they basically started doing lots of research on on different things and uh, then somehow i think you know we we that's a topic for another day really like why different studies were done and uh, they were skewed in a different way but today for one reason or another um, the health guidelines are very much different from what they were uh, like a few hundred years ago for example yeah uh, and uh, i think that you can also see a very big correlation uh, of course we need to be careful with with correlation um, doesn't mean causation of course but, you know, how the health of the world today is and the trend where we are going, it's very much correlated with when the government and when the like guidelines started giving out the advice that we are following today. And yeah. at least for me, uh, how it has affected me, uh, of, of course, for most of my life, been following very much the food pyramid uh, the health guidelines you should avoid saturated fat red meat and uh, yeah. increase the vegetables grains that you're eating and for me it's it's been quite devastating for my health really and i think that many people are today suffering from thinking from eating a way that they think is healthy but yeah. it's really not and i think that's that's the biggest problem we have today when it comes to like diet and nutrition advice so yeah you know, I'm living in Finland too, as, as, as you know. And w w would you say that, um, would you say it's an exaggeration to say that, that Finland's a high trust society and a lot of Finns, you know, they'll, they'll, whether this is still the case now or whether doubts are emerging or whatever. But, you know, if, if the equivalent of the BBC, Ule, says something about health or, uh, Helsing in Sanomat, which is a newspaper, or the Ilta Leti, um, what's the other one called? Ilta, Ilta Sanomat. Ilta Sanomat, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would it be an exaggeration to say that, that Finns are kind of overly trusting? I, I wouldn't say so. I think that the majority, um, they still very much believe like in the institutions and stuff. Uh, so, so basically if, if a doctor or some authority says something particular, I think most people will definitely go with that. And, um, I think in today's study, I'm not sh sure if it's like in Finland specifically, I think it's in most Western, most True. of the Western world, really that, um, people, they're, they're too lazy really to think for themselves. 
Yeah, they just want to go, go go with the crowd, and if you know a high authority figure says something, they will most likely believe that. So I, I think it's the case as well in Finland uh, for for most people. What 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 I was getting at, Felix, is that I think a lot of the kind of people who are clearly suffering from metabolic problems that you see in the supermarket, you know, like yeah, the, the big obese people. What amazes yeah. me is is their basket of food is quite interesting because you can see that in some senses they do care about what they eat. Yeah, one hundred percent. They'll always they'll always have zero fat milk. They'll yeah. have um, zero fat yogurt or weird protein bars or yeah, be the size of a house. And then they might have a, a bag of um, a big bag of sweets as well in there, and maybe a couple of bars of yeah. chocolate or whatever. Yeah. Um, but something else that I something else that I kind of I, I didn't talk to you about. I've never talked to you about this before, but I think you know Finland's been quite a, an isolated sort of genetic population, and you know up until recently there was not a lot of people coming and going from Finland, apart from between yeah. Finland and Sweden and maybe Finland yes. and Russia. But yeah. I think I think would you. Would you say that Finns are kind of more prone to developing metabolic diseases because of the climate and what what Finns have eaten for millennia, which was mostly kind of animal stuff? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, well, if you think about the history of Finland, um, until recently, we have mostly eaten very much animal products. And yeah. uh, especially here, here in the Nordics, you know, most people can tolerate uh, for example, milk and dairy very well, and I think yeah. that's a sign. That's a sign of that we have really been, um, you know, eating bunch of animal products, and and therefore this change of now switching to more uh, carb based diet and eating lot, lot lots more of grains and vegetables. Yeah. Um, as you say, I think it will. We are more prone to really get than all of these disease and stuff. Because of, yeah. of the background, so I, I definitely think that's the case here, and and I think you know looking at looking at the stats in Finland, I think as you said, most people are doing the things that they think are healthy. So most yeah. people, I definitely think that most people like care about their health and stuff. So yeah. so they try to you know do as as the health guideline says, but still we still see a lot of like metabolic disease and issues you know being on the rise so so at least for me it's it's sad to see but but yeah i think that's that's exactly the case i've I've not checked the stats but i wouldn't be surprised if there was probably maybe more diabetes in finland than maybe in 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 britain you know there seems to be an awful lot of people with the the kind of the sugar sensors stuck to their arms and yeah and, and another thing as well obviously in the past um I don't know. I don't know how far you'd go back. Maybe 400 agricultures growing grains in Finland's probably only been going on for like maybe three or four centuries. Yeah, not not a long time. Yeah. So it's not. And I suppose before that, the only sweet things that Finns had available would have been berries, blueberries, strawberries, yeah. blueberries. Blueberry, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's not what? the best climate to really grow grow anything. No, here. no, no. But but Finns. Yeah. This is the thing you see, and uh, by eating this diet that was full of animal protein, yeah. well, you know, I think that that's pretty good for your brain, isn't it? One hundred percent. Yeah, that, yeah that's a key to brain health. I I, I can say this because I'm a I'm a foreigner and I'm allowed to say it, but Finland is is what I would call a high IQ society. Finns are yeah. Like, really smart people and if you come to if you come to finland and you see it i know Finns will say it's not as good as it used to be and they might have a point but the place runs mm. like clockwork uh, it's yeah, a very very uh highly organized um civilized society and i think that that has got something to do with the genetics of finland which has got something to do with the type of food that was available um in finland and the harsh climate and it was it yeah. was selecting for people who had high high IQ levels. Yeah. But um 
So I, I think Finns, they they like sweetness, don't they? Because I guess, you know, with the berries, the be yeah. they were only available for maybe six weeks a year, if, if yeah. that maybe. So today what I yeah. noticed is um, when sweet stuff is available, Finns seem to love it, but it doesn't do them... It, it's an absolute disaster area for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That has been the case for for me as as well my whole life. Like, um, I used to very much like binge eat on anything. So if I if I started eating some sort of sweets or 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 any sugar or carbs, really, like it was hard to stop. So so that that is definitely a gene that I've inherited. And I think that's very much the case. Like if you live in, in the Nordics or in Finland and you have berries for, you know, a few weeks a year and you, then you have a long, harsh winter where it's like minus 30, 40, minus like 30, 40 uh, degrees Celsius, then you really want to stack up on, on some yeah. body fat for that winter. So it, exactly. really, it makes perfect sense that if you, if sweets or if, something sugary is available you will eat as much of it as possible and and yeah. i think that's definitely the case but the difference today is that they're available all the time and yeah. we're not no one is really starving in finland so, so <laughs> no. yeah not yeah so now it's now it's a problem yeah and it's also sort of a cultural thing you know the finland has this uh, culture of like coffee and and like cakes pulla yeah yeah, definitely. Which is, yeah. which is which is a big which is a big part of. Um, but it's, it's it's so anyway. Look, we, I'm I'm kind of waffling a little bit here, but I think Finland does have some some big problems with metabolic health because of that yeah. because of the kind of the unique unique sort of genealogy of the place and the climate and whatever. But is is there any signs that you can observe that? Um, that people are, are are realizing this and are ditching the sh sugary stuff and the carbs. Well, unfortunately, right now, I I can't I can't see people like waking up to the fact yet. I mean, some people are of course realizing that you know the sugars and the carbs are an issue, but I think one of the biggest problems is that the food, like the guidelines and the recommendations, are still. I mean, they're just getting worse and worse. Um, yeah. because I, I looked at last year's like Nordic food guidelines. I think it's for, it's for the old Nordic, Nordic countries. They, they have the same one and, uh, time and time again, the amount of red meat, for example, is decreasing every year. Yeah. So you should eat less and less red meat and you should increase the amount of grains and vegetables and fruit that you should be consuming. So yeah. I think many people will still follow that and and because yeah. we have a pretty educated society as well like everyone gets basically free education all the way um i, I think that is also a reason why everyone kind of from an early age gets fed this same information that you should follow the food pyramid you should follow the advice that your doctor gives you and this yeah. is what you should eat this is what you shouldn't eat so i think it's it's pretty hard to actually break the cycle because we have just yeah. been kind of brainwashed uh, our whole lives. And the only reason why I kind of now has started to realize these things and kind of broken out of this, this loop is that I wasn't feeling good. And I went to like several doctors and asked them like, what could, what could be wrong with me? And, uh, no one had an answer for me. So yeah. that's when I started to do my own research and, uh, I think that's a beautiful thing with the internet that it really kind of gives power power to the people to you know do your own research and and decide like 50 years ago it would have not been possible for me to do this yeah. because I I wouldn't have access to the information. Yeah, agreed completely, Felix. So you're you're uh, am I right in thinking that your dad is a doctor? Yes, correct. And what type of um, what type of a doctor is he? What does he? Um, he, he specialized in, um, it was some sort of medicine. Uh, I, I can't say the English term for it, but it's some sort of like special medicine and, and basically emerge em, emergency doctor. Of, okay. Of some sort. Okay. Cool. 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 So yeah, what, did you, um, what did, did you tell him when you, when you switched your diet? Yeah. Yeah, of course. So, so when I first started carnivore, I was of course very skeptic myself and yeah, yeah. I've always, I've always I've always liked to debate and have conversations because I know that 
my knowledge is not perfect. I, I don't know like everything. So I was very open to just, you know, throw it out there. This is what I'm going to try. What do you think about it? And at first um, it got kind of heated because it's not a surprise that he has the same thoughts that all other doctors that had that I've talked yeah, yeah. with. So he was very much against it. And uh, at first, but, but I wanted to talk to him because it's very, it's a very good way to really see the gaps in your own knowledge. So I started talking with him and, and he started giving me arguments for why it's bad. And uh, immediately I noticed that I haven't done enough research. So uh, at, at first I was very skeptical myself, like uh, what am I really getting into? But then I started doing research and uh, I started answering all the questions that he had. So what about vitamin C? Will you get enough nutrients? Uh, what about your cholesterol? It will be sky high. And after I had done research, I, I talked to him again and I and I was able to answer all his questions very logically. I had studies for it. I had a lot of logic there. And uh, at some point, he really couldn't give me a good answer for why the carnivore that would be bad. And I also yeah. started noticing, I started asking him questions um, about different diets and stuff and at some point, I noticed, I actually noticed knowledge, knowledge gaps in his thinking. And that was kind of a moment when I realized that, um, okay, I can't really um, take him too seriously with what he tells me. Because, wow. uh, because uh, in some sense, I have more knowledge about some areas than he has. And uh, hey, Felix, that was, just, yeah. just one, one second. Sorry to interrupt. So could yeah. you give us a couple of examples of where you found he had gaps in his knowledge, like some specific? Yeah. Thanks. Yes, of course. Yeah. Um, so this is going to be kind of harsh to him, but um, I remember it was a point uh, where um, he he kind of we kind of went in and compared like carbohydrates to fats, and at some point um, I, I told him that you don't need car you don't need carbs for anything. It's not essential. The only thing you need are protein and fats. Uh, so there's nothing as a essential carbohydrate. And at that point, um, he said, I don't remember how it exactly was, but he kind of pointed out that you don't need fats. Like he asked me like, or he told me that there's nothing essential in fats. Uh, although there are just hundreds mm. of different functions that, you know, fats and saturated fats has on you and you can't survive without fat. And uh, he was kind of making the point that you could just choose carbs and not fat. And at that moment, I realized that, yeah, there is something really missing here because fats are absolutely essential for you in many ways. And yeah. at that moment, that kind of clicked for me that, okay, I, I can't really take everything that he's saying like too serious. Like the things that he's doing, uh, I'm sure he's very good at. Or, or what I've heard and seen, he's very good at his job. But I think that today, you know, yeah. doctors, they don't get the schooling on nutrition. And yeah. if you think about what the doctor's really job is, it's really not to fundamentally change your health and, and get you healthy. It's really just no. to um, give you medications, do operations and get you to start fun functioning normally. Yeah. But it's really not to fix your fundamental health. And and, and the same things, you know, I've heard from different doctors that I've talked about. So I don't think it's it's him specific, unfortunately. But, no. but yeah, that was that was one example. Yeah, I guess with him being an emergency doctor, you know, he's yeah. more used to dealing with people who smash their cheekbone in with an ice. Yes, exactly. And repairing. Yeah, them. yeah exactly. Yeah. So it, it, he's. He's not maybe like the best example, but if you're a doctor, you should, I think it should be required to really um, dive deeper into like nutrition and stuff, because oh. fundamentally, uh, that's how we really can get people healthy. And that should be the priority. And I remember he, he has talked about um, this sort of mindset. He has talked about, you know, fixing the root cause before, but I don't really think that he has the um, adequate training for for really for that for that thing to happen yeah yeah and felix how are you now with him do you, you you're still on did he did he get at did he react angrily to you or are you still on good terms with him 
Yeah, I'm I'm on great terms with him. Like we have mm. had heated discussions before about politics, about uh, like everything, and and almost always, um, it, it always starts off by a pretty heated argument and stuff. But then over time, usually, um, this far, I, I'm usually, uh, I, I'm usually on to something. So I'm usually kind of right. And after after a while, after a few years, they usually kind of turn on my side. Um, although they. The start is usually pretty heated. So, actually, I think it was a few week, weeks ago we talked about it again about uh, carnivore and stuff, and uh, you know keto diets. And I think at at some point he has started to really like like uh, respecting it and and kind of seeing it from a different angle. And Brilliant. and and yeah, and and that's pretty positive because um, I, he saw one of my videos where I talked about um, how. Really, a carnivore diet and red meat can help you to fight cancer and how ketosis is very beneficial. He actually yeah. watched that video and he, for the first time in a very long time, he actually gave me a compliment. So he said that, yeah, very good insights. I, I agree with everything. And yeah. I was basically, yeah, and I was basically advocating for a ketogenic carnivore diet. So I think he's really starting to understand more and, and opening up to the idea that this might actually be a pretty good idea and and also he's also seen my benefits i've talked about it pretty openly about all the things that has happened to my health and how i'm feeling better every single day so i think slowly but surely he's, he's really um getting accepting the idea more so i think that that's a good thing to see at least that he's still able to change his mind because i think Brilliant. that might be that might be pretty hard uh, if you have been studying something, you've been working with it for your whole life, you're basically dedicated all your energy to a certain goal. And then you're somehow supposed to change to the opposite. I understand yeah. that that could take some time. And I'm not sure if everyone is able to really change their mind on that. Right. T t two comments. First one is like to be kind towards your dad. He's an emergency yeah. doctor. So his yeah. His, how important would metabolic health be in his in his particular role in his particular branch of medicine? Yeah, yeah. I can kind of understand why, you know, he probably hasn't researched it as much as he he, he could yeah. have done. But yeah. then I think the other thing, the other clincher, really, is he's actually seen his own son transform yeah. his health, and he's seen that presumably with his own eyes. Yeah, 100%. which is actually quite difficult to deny, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is really the biggest reason that I've really been changing my health quite a lot, and I've talked so openly about it. So it's it's anecdotal data, but it's pretty hard to deny. And I think that I I told him that he should really try it himself, uh, and and he and he told me that he he wouldn't have a problem with it, like like he he would be able to do it, but. Uh, I think that would really change his mind if he would try it himself for 30 days yeah. eating a carnivore diet. I think that would really um, yeah. get him to think otherwise. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know, is he is he a healthy weight or could he do to lose a few kilos? Yeah, he could. Yeah, he could definitely lose a few kilos. Like right. that, that, that wouldn't be an issue. So um, I think it would do him very, very well as 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 for many people. Yeah. Because the, the the only reason why I mention that is that I think for people that are maybe uh, I'm going to say metabolically unwell or maybe yeah. even pre diabetic, yeah, um, I, I think the carnivore diet for people in that position is it, it's it really is a game changer, isn't it? One hundred percent. Yeah, I think that's the best thing you can do. You basically if you go zero carbs. So you eat no sugar, you eat no carbohydrates. That will really change the way your body functions. And um, from what I've seen, and, and there's been quite a lot of studies on a ketogenic diet and how effective it is at weight loss. And it's proven to be the most effective way at reducing body fat and uh, still keeping muscle. So the ketogenic yeah. diet, I would say, is proven by now. Uh, I think the evidence is pretty obvious. And then if you think about the carnivore diet, that is just the pure form of the ketogenic diet. So that yeah. is just the ultimate ketogenic diet. So I think that most people in today's world would 100% benefit a lot from 
either adopting a ketogenic diet or if they really want to see improvements, then a carnivore diet. Yeah, yeah. Because I think, you know, for you, your goal, you know, you're a, you were a fairly healthy weight before you before yeah. you switched anyway. Yours was more about yeah. trying to improve mental clarity and building a bit yes. more muscle. Yeah. But um, I think that's, I, I think... Um, what you've done there is that it provides a blueprint blueprint for what we could all be doing, which is to be to set a good example, and then um, people will notice it. You know, through either yeah, you yeah. losing weight or you know a better skin or all the other benefits. Yeah. And then you have yeah. a when they ask you about what you've done, you've then yeah. got a, a way in, haven't you? They yeah they're obliged to listen yeah, if they've definitely. asked you the question yeah 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 that's it I think I think that is really the key and it's very hard to change other people's minds like if they've been taught a certain thing their whole life it's very hard to change it so I think that is really the most effective way to actually see the progress see the improvements in other people and uh, of course you know I'm I'm not yet in in any any way I don't have perfect health yet but. I'm really feeling the improvements every day. And I think like within a year from now, um, I will be so healthy that it's, it's very hard to deny for people. And, uh, and yeah, I think that that's a great thing that, you know, it takes some time, but over a long time period, you will become very healthy uh, with this kind of, uh, this way of eating. So Felix, I know you go to the gym and, and you, you're at university yeah, at the yeah. moment. So what, what have your friends um, thought um, when, when have they noticed um, a difference? Yeah, or have they... yeah uh, I mean, they have definitely been curious about it and, and like noticed the difference because I've been very open about it. And at least for me, the biggest difference are really in, in energy, mental clarity, not having brain fog. And, uh, you know, people have noticed um that you know i have more energy i'm more present in the moment and uh you know i just i've also been to, quite open about it so i think most people have been quite curious so they haven't really of my friends they haven't really been very very like critical or anything they've been more curious yeah. and a few of my friends have actually switched into a carnivore way of eating and they've been i think the most important thing is that they have been really um, they have started to question the the normal uh, guidelines and the normal way of yeah. doing things, and I, I think that's the best thing that they really think for themselves and and do own yeah. their own research instead of just going with the crowd like they've always done. So yeah, uh, positive changes there. That's good. I, I think as you know, as I said to you before, I think what what happened in 2020, 2021, I think that opened a lot of people's minds and people, I think even in Finland are slightly less trusting than they yeah. were. And I, I'm basing that off reading the comments pages of uh, Helsing in Sanomat or the, the Ilta newspapers and people who are yeah. openly criticizing yeah. Yeah. the kind of establishment's um, viewpoints yeah. on climate change and diet and why there's a sudden increase in cancer and things like that. Yeah. Yeah, I've also seen more and more people really open up their eyes and, and like waking up to the fact. But it's still a pretty, it's still, most people are still not that way. But yeah. it's definitely increasing. Uh, yeah. Like if you compare it to like five years ago and before 2020, it's it's definitely on, on like increasing and, and on the trend. Yeah. Have you, have you sort of thought of a way of uh, trying to explain very quickly like kind of why it is so important to stop eating sugars and carbohydrates and switch towards a diet where most of your calories are coming from fat what would you say to somebody about why you don't need carbs and sugar yeah yeah so so in short um i think that we humans we are basically for most of our or time as a species for about two and a half million years and all evolution we have really mostly been eating animal products a lot of red meat and, and saturated fat and it's only about you know eight to ten thousand years ago when the agri agricultural revolution started and we started harvesting the grains 
and we went from these hunter gatherers into really a agricultural society. That's the first time when we have started to eating grains and lots of carbohydrates. Be before that point, we were eating, you know, a little bit of berries or something, but the sweetest thing we could really eat uh, had the sweetness of a carrot today or something like that. Yeah. So yeah, it was very, very minimally uh, carbs and sugars. So just from a evolution perspective, yeah. we have for a very short period of time been eating the way we are now. And uh, that is, so that really means that it's very unnatural for us to, to eat um, this huge amount of grains, carbs, and, and getting yeah. a huge amount of our calorie intake from sugars. So that is really messing us, messing us up in, in many ways. And yeah. the biggest thing really is that because it's so unnatural for us to get that amount of sugar in us, um, it's really causing a lot of different pro problems such as metabolic health, um, the body being more inflamed. And also when your blood sugar is high all the time, your insulin will also be higher, which means that you will become obese a lot faster. It's a lot harder to really lose weight. And yeah. uh, there's just so many things that comes with it. And also if you're eating more grains and you're eating less saturated fat, you're eating less red meat, it also means that you're replacing your good nutrients that would come from animal products with a a lot worse nutrients. So the nutrients from, for example, plants are a lot less bioavailable than in um, red meat and animal products. So yeah. you're really missing out on lots of nutrients that are very bioavailable and that your body really can utilize because it's very important to compare what nutrients can your body utilize and what what can it not? Because, yeah. for example, I think the best example is really fiber. So people talk about fiber being essential for your health and, and you know, your for your digestive system and stuff. But we can't break down fiber. Like humans, yeah. humans can't can't break down fiber. So it's really you're really eating something that you're essentially have to come out um, yeah. at at some point. So it's really about eating a species appropriate diet. Cows, for example, they eat only grass and they can digest the grass. They have four different stomachs. But humans, we are really not designed to eat the amount of plants that we are eating today. So that, in short, that is really the big the big problem there. Yeah. I, I guess it's something that I learned as well, you know, you, you talk very well there about insulin. Yeah. You know, the, the, for people to understand that insulin is a hormone and it's a fat yeah. storage hormone. Exactly. Basically, yeah. when you eat loads of carbs, it breaks down into sugar. Your body doesn't like sugar in its bloodstream, can't tolerate much of it. So it secretes yeah. stuff called insulin, which, yeah. which is a fat storage hormone. But Felix, it's going to cut off in a minute. Can I just say again, thanks so much for agreeing to come on. And um, you're, you're a great, you're doing great work. Um, you're doing God's work, I would say, in terms of um, spreading this information. And, thank you. Um, I just want to thank you so much for that and keep going. And that's thank all you I very want to much, say. Nigel. It's, it's, you, you, you're, well, you're most welcome. And uh, God bless to you and you and yours. Yes, God bless. Thank you. Cheers, cheers Felix. Cheers.